Hello and welcome to Baseball Barbacast, the only baseball podcast in the world more insightful than Nick Castellanos. I'm Jake Mance, that's Jordan Schusterman. I can't promise that. Okay. <laughs> Nick Castellanos has been dropping wisdom uh, for years now, and uh, we're just here to talk ball and have a good time. I am sitting next to my dear friend Jake Mintz, my co-host. We are recording this at a studio in New York City. I'm visiting for a couple of days, so we're going to watch this, this 6 a.m. Korean uh, game on Wednesday morning. Very excited for that. Uh, but we're also going to record a couple podcasts, and today on this Monday, uh, March 18th, we are going to preview the National League East Featuring the New York Mets, of course, of New York City fame. That's what's what they're of known New for. New York City, <laughs> New York City fame. fame. Uh, but before we get to the NL East, we first of all, it's nice to see you. How are you, Jake? It's, I'm really well. The baseball season is technically starting in two days. It is technically starting in two days, but it's also not. Uh, the Korea games are cool and don't feel real at the same time. Yes, I've enjoyed watching some of the exhibitions. Will it feel like real baseball in two days? I don't know, but I'm looking forward to watching it. Uh, and since Blake Snell is still not on a team, Jordan Montgomery is still not on a team. Jordan Montgomery's not even getting rumors at this point. I mean, this is, this I is a tough scene. I haven't heard any. He's like, he's gone. <laughs> he was like, talk about pitchers who went from like kind of average guy, like, oh, that's a major league pitcher, to like, whoa, Jordan Montgomery's so famous. Oh, we're going to be talking about him all, minute, all winter. And li quite literally, we talked about him all winter. And then now he's Now he's gone full him. Kate Middleton. He's gone. He, maybe he's with Kate Middleton. I, oh. uh, have we seen either of them in months? No. I, I don't know. So it's kind of still feeling weird that the season's about to start, but we are going to preview the NL East. But before we get to that, oh yeah, we have to update uh, on the Baseball Barbicast Fantasy League, which we announced not that long ago, and it has spiraled into something uh, much, or I guess I should say spiraled seems like it's going down. This is like growing in size to a degree that I don't, think, I don't think we were fully prepared for. So we, we did say we are going to do a fantasy league with, uh, you know, a, a selection of, of podcast listeners. And, you know, again, this is, Jake has enough fantasy. We have spent a long time. We, of course, wanted to do a fantasy league on Yahoo, Yahoo Fantasy, yep. whatever, right? Um, but I don't think we fully grasped what this would mean. And maybe this was naive of us. Yeah, we've gotten over 200 emails from people uh, explaining why they should be in the league. Now, we did ask them for that. We, we did ask for that. Yeah. I have not played fantasy sports in a long time. Mm -hmm. However, I know that you can't really do that with 200 people. No. Can't, you can't have a really have a 200 league. person league. No. Everyone gets two players. <laughs> <laughs> hitter uh, and pitch. The more we talk about it, I'm like, actually, can we do a 200 person league? I maybe we can pull uh. some strings at Yahoo and be like, hey, look, I know this is kind of obnoxious, yeah. but can we actually have a 200 person league? So we can't do that. We can't do that. But what can we do? We have sifted through all of the emails, mm -hmm. and we have selected some. We're narrowing it down. Yes. Um. We're going to try and get it down to a reasonable number. It's going to be a bigger league than we're comfortable with, <laughs> but we're happy with that. We're going to yes. be fine. Uh, the deadline for submissions is today, Monday at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Okay. All right. So okay. A, little bit, a little bit later. 6 p.m. Mountain, Mountain Time on Monday. <laughs> we are going to close the inbox. Not really. You can still email us at baseballbarbercast.gmail.com, but... Submissions for the Fantasy League, of which we already have too many, will cut off at 6 p.m. Mountain Time on Monday. We will be selecting, we will be sending out invites in the next 48 hours or so. We are planning on drafting on Sunday evening, next Sunday evening, uh, March 24th, Mountain Time TBD. <laughs> but it will be Sunday evening, of course, on Yahoo. You can sign up for Yahoo uh, Fantasy Baseball, yahoo.com slash fantasy baseball. Um, so, again, thank you all for the interest. That so many more that we would love to have in the league than that we can let in, but we really appreciate the interest and we're really excited about this. Speaking of Mountain Time, very briefly, yeah. Did you see the news that the Colorado Rockies are heavily considering extending their manager Bud Black? <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, I did it. All right. Okay. Well, good. That's why I want to be on Mountain Time because <laughs> the Rockies rule. <laughs> All right. No more. No more Rockies chat. Uh, we we did enough. NL West um, last week. Uh, this podcast is about the National League East. And as always, we are going to go from bottom to top uh, in order of the BetMGM over-unders. You know, the projections are a little bit different sometimes, but in this case, you know, is this the order we're going to necessarily go with? This is going to be interesting. Uh, but we are going to, of course, start at the bottom of our National League East preview with the Nationals of Washington. My goodness, a lot has happened with them since they won the World Series in 2019. A lot has happened in the world. I, I like to think about that World Series as like the last World Series. I have thought about this often as will we 
look at post-2020 baseball as like a different era. Like in 50 yeah. years when we're describing the eras of baseball, will 2019 be like the end of, of a – because yeah. there's a lot – it's not just, you know, it's the juice, the last juice ball season. It's yeah. the last season before all, – all, all these different things. In my mind, the Nationals won the World Series, mm -hmm. and the next day – Rudy Gobert touched that microphone. <laughs> exactly. That's there was no nothing in between. Uh, nothing in between. So anyway, the Nationals are, are a fascinating franchise. Of course, growing up in the DC area, we think and care about the Nats a lot. My younger brother David is a big Nationals fan, so I think about this team a lot. Um, are they going to get the most time in the podcast? Probably not. No. What did they do last year, they Jake? Were, they were they were not that bad, but they certainly were not good. They were a good bad team. They were yeah. seventy one and ninety one, like. Mm -hmm. The Mets won 75 games. <laughs> like, they tried to chase the Mets down. Yeah. Uh, they were not... They, they got better as the year went on. They got slightly more interesting as the year went on. They had a really awful September, though. Wow, that is just brutal. Yeah. Jesus. And, and I think we thought they were going to be... It, it was weird. They, they, they had enough talent where they could kind of go on some hot streaks, but... Again, in that division, we knew they weren't necessarily uh, going to be contending for anything, and we know they've been very purposefully sort of in a rebuild over the last couple of years. Uh, what do they do over the offseason? Not a ton. They bring in some interesting veterans, Jesse Winker, Joey Gallo, Nick Senzel, just the total, you know, 2015 uh, top prospect list, just, you know, coalescing in this lineup. We'll see how many of them are actually still decent uh, major league hitters. I think what's notable is what they didn't do because there was an argument that the Nats should have done the – we're not good yet, but let's prepare for next mm -hmm. year for 2025. Mm -hmm. And they didn't do that. Like there was, you know, should they go get Reese Hoskins? Mm -hmm. Should they sign a younger player to a longer or deal? Sign a big starter. She's like, I guess could still sign Blake Snell, but it doesn't seem likely. Um, so, but it seems like they kind of went half measures. Guys that could probably trade. Guys that can yeah. make their offense look slightly more respectable. So, not a lot of action in the winter. Uh, but who is on this baseball team? Who is on this baseball team behind the dish? Kybert Ruiz and Riley Adams. Mm -hmm. Riley Adams, friend of the show. First base, Joey Gallo. Mm -hmm. Second base, Luis Garcia Jr. Shortstop, CJ Abrams, we're very excited about. Third base, Nick Senzel. Fascinating one. Man. I don't want to harp on him for too long, but <laughs> second overall pick is a third baseman by the Reds. Yeah. The Reds kind of had him play everywhere. Yes, but the last couple of years, he basically maintained his value by bouncing around the field because his hitting just hasn't yeah. quite stayed. He's had a bunch of fluke weird injuries. Great rebound candidate. Like, yes. perfect yes. post-hype guy. Mm -hmm. Outfield, Victor Robles is somehow still <laughs> on the Washington Nationals. He's the only guy, field. the only hitter left. Only uh, hitter left, I, I guess, believe. from 2019. Yep. Uh, Eddie Rosario, who they signed... A couple weeks ago. Yeah, who might be pl also playing some center field, which Bizarre. is uh, absurd. Uh, Lane Thomas and Wright and mm -hmm. the DH spot will be split between Joey Manessis and mm -hmm. Jesse Winker mm -hmm. because Jesse Winker, respectfully, should not be anywhere near the outfield. <laughs> the starting rotation, Jojo Gray, mm -hmm. Patrick Corbin, Mackenzie Gore, Jake Irvin, Trevor Williams, and the bullpen, uh, Kyle Finnegan, Hunter Harvey, and Tanner Rainey. Tanner Rainey was on the 2019 yeah. Tanner Rainey's back. Uh, the one big question about this team, though, has nothing to do with any of the pe people we just mentioned. <laughs> no. uh, it is about Dylan Cruz and James Wood, mm -hmm. two of the best 10 prospects in baseball. When do they show up? Yeah, yeah I think uh, now anytime you have one top 10 prospect in baseball who's close to the big leagues, you're wondering when they're going to come up. But to have two guys both in the outfield when the outfield picture, as we just described. Now, Lane Thomas is good. Um, and maybe Lane Thomas is like you could see a situation where – the very easy thing to imagine is the Nats are bad and they trade Lane Thomas and like the next day they call up both yep. Cruz and Wood, right? Like that's something you could you could very much see see, uh, see happening. Um, but yeah, I mean it's it's all about those guys. Like those and no, they don't have to be all stars this year, right? It's not like if they come up and are only average that that the Nationals are doomed. But in terms of excitement, in terms of what's going to get people to want to go to Nationals games yeah. again, this is going to be what it is, and and it will probably happen at some point this season. That's the data point. Right, the memory that Nationals fans will have from the 2024 season will mm -hmm. be the debuts of these two players, mm -hmm. unless you know Jake Irvin throws a perfect game. <laughs> uh, however, my key player this year for the Nats is Mackenzie Gore. Yep. I think it, it's to me it's it's Gore, Ruiz, Abrams, and Gray. This quartet represent the hypothetical core that's already at the big league level of the next good Nats team. All four of those players were acquired in trades from the teardown from the 2019 team. Uh, Gore and Ruiz were the return for Trey Turner and Max Scherzer from mm -hmm. the Dodgers. And then C.J. Abrams and Mackenzie Gore were the return from the Padres, part of that return mm -hmm. for Juan Soto, mm -hmm. who's only 25. Uh, 
But for me, Gore is the one who has shown the most potential, and I feel the best about a breakout. He was the best pitching prospect in the world a handful of years ago, and he's still doing the things that made him that. Yeah. And so I have enough faith in him as a player. I think he's really smart. I think he's really talented, and I think he's going to take a big step forward this year. Yeah, I think that's that's totally reasonable. Like for him, it's mostly been a matter of health. Um, so. If he can stay on the mound and throw 150 innings, I think he's going to be pretty good. My key player is Kyber Reese, their catcher. We are all in on C.J. Abrams. Like, I'm not really worried about C.J. Abrams, and I'm not going to say I'm worried about Ruiz, but Ruiz... Oh, I'm worried about Ruiz. Okay, well, so again, <laughs> there's, there's more concerns with him as a switch hitting catcher. They've already extended him, so they've said, like, you are our franchise catcher. And because he has shown... Like, he still he does have elite contact skills. He, You know, I would say above average power for a catcher as well. The defense was so rough last year, like truly, truly bad. And not that he was, you know, projected to be a, you know, a gold glover necessarily, but he's going to be the catcher. This isn't a situation yeah. where, you know, he's going to be the DH at any point. Like he's clearly the catcher. And for this whole pitching staff to improve also, he's going to be part of that equation as well. So I trust the bat. I still believe in him, but that's something that has to happen because yeah. we've already said this before on so many previews, like knowing who your catcher is going to be for the long time, they, they've committed to him. He's going to be the guy. So he needs to be a part of it on both sides of the ball. Also, when we compare him to someone like Francisco Alvarez on mm -hmm. the Mets, who we'll talk about a little bit later, Ruiz is four years older yep. than Alvarez and was so unbelievably awful mm -hmm. at certain parts of his game in 2023 that the bottom can drop out with him. First percentile base running value. Mm -hmm. First percentile fielding value. Okay. Awful chase rate. Yeah. Did yeah. not hit the ball particularly hard that often. I, I will say I'm I'm bullish on I, I think he will be an above average hitter. That part I'm not, I'm less worried about, even though there are some red flags there. But at the defense, okay, I mean, he could be an above average hitter as a catcher. Right. I don't think he's capable of being an above average first baseman or DH. Sure, but that's, that's why he needs to be a good catcher. And I don't think he will be. Which he <clears throat> certainly wasn't last year. So Cabrera is very important. Uh, something that makes us laugh about the Nationals. Patrick Corbin <laughs> is finally at the end of his massive contract. Now, this is a contract that you could say, worth it. He was unbelievable in his first season. This they don't win the World Series without him. Amazing theoretical, just like an amazing question, mm -hmm. a lens through which to view baseball. Was the Patrick Corbin <laughs> contract worth it, right? Unbelievable in 2019 when they win. And then in the postseason too, he's I mean, he's, in the you couldn't have asked for anything more in, in his first year. Six years, one hundred and forty million dollars, and then and since then he has been so ass. So again, so part of it ass. is because the rest of the team's been bad too. But he has led the league in losses three straight years, which I don't care what you think of pitcher losses. That's that's impressive in Pat the, in the other direction. Patrick <laughs> Chlorblin. I mean, he is now, and this is the other thing about him. He has been. Basically, the most, one of the most durable pitchers in the league for five years running. He basically hasn't missed a start for six seasons, which is like, oh, that's nice. But also, he's been so bad that he's obviously racked up all these L's. Now he's in his last year. The contract's backloaded, so he's making Dude, like $35 million. He's making $35 million. He has a 575 ERA in 94 <laughs> starts over the past three seasons. And again, like, so now it's, and now listen, he's only 34. I, it's just what what is how does this end? I, does it matter at all? Yeah. Can he be a trade candidate? I don't know. To me, He's the so funniest weird. thing is if he bookends four years <laughs> of total poo poo with an amazing first season, and he like figures I it out this year, and they trade him at the deadline, <laughs> and they get a prospect back. That's how I, right. I mean, they're still gonna have to pay it down most of the deal, but uh, so maybe good. they can trade him. All right, that's it. Uh, Sixty six and a half is the over under. They were over Again, that last year. Yeah, man. 71 last year. I mean, maybe you're expecting the division to be better. I'll go slightly over. Slightly over for me. I'll take the over as well. Okay. There's a re there's reason to believe they could still be one of the you know three worst teams in the league. But I'll, we're, we're, we're a positive show. Uh, let's move on. Taking the over on every To team. the Marlins of Miami. Jake and I are both representing the fight and fish today. I'm wearing 
my uh, Marlins hat, Jake, rocking the 97. The 1997 World Series champion shirt. Yes. So we were covering all, Who the, could forget? all the eras of the fight and fish. What happened to them last year? Uh, Jake, the Marlins made the playoffs. It was hilarious. They only won 84 games. The run differential was minus a million. Skip Schumacher, Skip Schumacher said, I don't care. Uh, they, <laughs> won, I think it was some absurd record, 34 and 13, I believe, in one-run games. And they sneak in, and then they they look like an '84 win team Exposed. against the Phillies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was no one was shocked, but it was not a great showing for them uh, in Philadelphia. This but is hey, very they made niche. The playoffs. This is very niche, but you know, we do a lot of Division Three baseball coverage, and uh-huh. e- and this is the thing in like March Madness too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Is where a team <laughs> gets in, they're like the last team off the bubble, and they get in, and they just get dog walked <laughs> yes. immediately. However, and it's like, and it's like. Wow, all the other teams that didn't get in must be so pissed right. that they that the Marlins got in. And I understand it's not how baseball yeah, works. They, like they, they were had, awarded an at-large. No, it wasn't like a committee right. let them into the playoffs. Right. But the Marlins getting worked over by the Phillies in two games. If I'm the Cubs or the Reds, I'm like, God, yeah, man. Could have we we could have gotten crushed by the Phillies, said, too. Same record as the D-backs. <laughs> right? So, say they, they both won 84 games, and one of them did not look like a playoff team, and one of them went to the World Series. So, what do they do this winter? Very, very, very little. Once Josh Bell opted in, well, they were like, well, that's our budget. New GM. <laughs> new GM. And he did. He traded for some of his former players from <laughs> Tampa Bay. Vidal Bruhan, Peter, ben- Peter Bendix. You know, Kim Ang, of course, leaves. Um, and then Peter Bendix does very little. They signed Tim Anderson at, at the very kind of end of the offseason. Otherwise, it has been rather quiet uh, on South Beach. And now it's like, all right, well, how in the world are they going to do that again? Well, who's on their baseball team? The catching position uh, is a platoon between Christian Betancourt and Nick Fortes. Betancourt, Guardians legend this <laughs> offseason. Oh, yeah. Went from the Rays to the Guardians for three minutes, and now he's on the Marlins. Mm-hmm. First base, Josh Bell, traded for him at the deadline last year, opted into the deal over the offseason. Luis Arise, who tantalized us uh, with his near 400 batting average <laughs> for quite a while and didn't end up anywhere near it. Uh, Jake Berger at third base, Tim Anderson at short. The outfield of Brian De La Cruz, who people think looks like LeBron. He does. More notable than that is that he sounds like Dikembe Mutombo. It's a heck if of a combo. If you've heard him talk, it sounds like he has <laughs> a pack of Marlboro lights in his esophagus. Which, uh, there are some great videos yeah, right of here. his teammates essentially doing his voice. It's unbelievable it's stuff. Great. Uh, Jazz Chisholm Jr. in center. Jesus Sanchez in right. Obviously, El Garcia will DH. Oof. Oh, Oof. man. He was terrible last year. Oh, boy. They're going to miss Solaire, I think. Yeah, rotation I would say. <laughs> is Jesus Lazardo. Okay, so there's a lot of injuries in this rotation. Let's yeah. just get that out of the way. On the injured list right now, Sandy Alcantara is out for the year. You got TJ. Yuri Perez is on the IL right now, as is Braxton Garrett and Edward Cabrera. So to start this— We don't know. Yuri Perez is still early. Left with, left with elbow issues, terrifying. Has not even—we don't have any update there yet. So I'm yeah. terrified, but— yeah. Leaving with elbow issues is better than showing up with elbow <laughs> issues. So the rotation is Jesus Lazardo, AJ Puck, who is moving from the bullpen, Trevor Rogers, who was uh, hurt for a lot of last year, Ryan Weathers, who they got at the deadline, and Yanni Chirinos. That's a lot of first round picks. A lot of first round picks <laughs> and a lot of lefties. Um, yeah. The bullpen, Andrew Nardi, Tanner Scott, Sixto Sanchez. Mm, the Sixto, baby. Love it. Uh, my one big question was this real or just a fling? Jordan, I think one of the differences between the two of us mm. is that I played and you mm-hmm. didn't. And what this Damn does right. is it creates an energy that I have where I believe irrationally in oh. baseball cliches more than you. Mm-hmm. And because of that, is it means that I would leap in front of traffic for mm-hmm. Skip Schumacher. Mm-hmm. I have never believed more in a human being in my life <laughs> than I believe in Skip. Which is to say, you're like, yeah, they can do it again. Why not? They're yes. like, they're going to go undefeated in one-run games I don't this think year. They're going to go undefeated. <laughs> right. 162 and zip. Yeah, yeah. Probably not. Um, but I understand what you're saying. I also think Scoop, Skip Schumacher's awesome. Scoop Shoemaker. Scoop. <laughs> there are so many funny ways you can say his name. He's a skipper named Skip. How am I to doubt him? Uh, but how am I to doubt him? Again, the, the vibes here in terms of the IL, it's just like the pitching... It was going to always have to be the pitching, and we've already lost three of them before opening day has even started. So that's that's where my concern is. Now, I, I am always going to root for this team just because they were 
such they they are facing such such an uphill battle. Most most of it most of it of their own creation for sure. Yep. Uh, but I enjoy rooting for them. I like when they succeed. But man, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to do this again. They, not just not just what went right for them. Think about what went wrong for so many of these other National League teams yeah. to let them to let them in at the last second. We were low on them last year. I guess they proved us wrong. <clears throat> uh, I think this team is gonna be pretty bad. Uh, I think Skip is great. I just don't think there is enough on the squad of impact that's going to like. Okay, if they go thirty two, they went thirty three and fourteen in one run games last year. Mm. If they're simply like regular good in one run games that's not yeah. enough i think this is a worse roster than it was last year between the injuries and losing solaire and i think they don't make up the difference with magic in the same way they did last year i think skip has a big job on his hands key player though i mean it's jazz chism jr and it's not close uh if he plays 155 games 140 games and he's an all-star down ballot mvp player mm -hmm. That gives the Marlins a legit offensive force outside of Luis Arise, right? Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. And if he's not, and if he's hurt again, that's a problem. We've talked about this a lot. He has the highest ceiling of any offensive player in this team, and yep. he's the biggest deal. Yep. Um, I agree. I would say, again, the pitching now, the way it's shaking out with all these injuries is is tough to – all these guys now just became way more important than we thought, like Rodgers and Weathers. But I'm going to go with Tim Anderson. I mean, I'm just – in terms of guys I'm fascinated to watch this season, he's pretty high on the list, and he's a new face, right? A lot of these other Marlins guys, let's say Bell and Berger generally repeat what they did, and Arise hits 350 again, and let's say Jazz is good. So you could count Jazz in as sort of a new face considering relative to what he was last year. But Tim Anderson, like, they're letting him play short. I, I just have no idea what I'm getting. If he can even get back to something average um, – that is also a big deal for this offense. So, but I'm I, I have no idea what I'm getting from him. But I'm rooting. I'm rooting for him. Uh, that's for sure. Something that makes us laugh about the Marlins, uh, Gabe Kapler's content. Gabe Kapler is now the farm director, um, in Miami or sorry AGM I believe, and and very much overseeing player development. But I think we thought when he was uh, you know let go by the Giants, we're like, oh great, Gabe Kapler's going to be so online all the time. Um, and then the Marlins hired him. I was like, oh, maybe he won't be posting weird content as much. And it's been the opposite. He's kept on posting. We talk a lot about, you know, oh, that guy posts. Yeah. This guy posts. Um, and I'm excited to see what uh, what he's what he's churning out. Like, I'm excited, you know, when he's visiting, you know, Pensacola. He's, he's, he's hanging out in double A, and he's like, oh, what's going on here? The best burger. <laughs> he's, he's doing his, his power walks, you know, yeah. to uh, through a Beloit well, or whatever. I was going to say, Jordan, if you're trying to decide mm -hmm. whether you're going to walk somewhere mm -hmm. or Uber or drive, and Google Maps says it's going to take you 10 mi minutes via car, that's probably right. But if it, if it tells you it's going to take 15 or 17 to walk that same distance, it could be wrong because, like, all you have to do is walk fast, and you're cutting that down by three or four minutes. So don't let that don't make you let get in a car. let that make you get in a car. 78 and a half that's is the, the over Marlins, under. That's the Marlins. <laughs> I need shirts. I need, I need <laughs> teal shirts that say <laughs> don't let that make you get in a car. 78. He's like telling, like, he's like visiting the low A team, and he's like, guys. No cars. Don't even think, think it. You about better it. be walking to the ballpark. 78 and a half is the over under. I mean, under. But I, I, I go, go fish, go. Come on, Marlins, make us proud. New York Mets, Jake. They're how, in this division. How'd things go last year? God. The most expensive. Uh, they were a gold toilet. <clears throat> the most expensive 75 of win toilets? team of all time. Like shakes have them. <laughs> gold toilets. Like, that's what they were. And yet, and yet, inexplicably, it seems like people are feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> this is just one of the strangest things. We're kind of jumping ahead here to what makes us laugh about the Mets. But, okay, how they, they were bad. They were bad. They traded away their, their rich old players. And they seem to be like, hey, let's restock the farm. Let's lose. Let's put out a AAA pitching staff and Whoa. move on to next year. That's what they did at the end of last year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. What do they do in the offseason? season? You know what? Let's let's get a couple veterans here. We'll get some one-year deals. You know, Luis Severino. We'll bring in Sean Mania, Harrison Bader. No, oh, Tony doesn't want to come here. That's fine. We don't need him. Here's G-Man Choi. He'll be our DH. New president of baseball operations, David Stearns. Let's just say, making his presence felt. Yes. Whole lot of buy lows, baby. Yep. And, and getting some former Brewers, of course. Bringing in Tyrone Taylor, Adrian Hauser. Um, 
New manager. So new we, get, we got a new manager. So it's it's very much like all not right, named Skip. We're hanging out. We're hang, It's all it's all good, man. Like we're we're gonna take it a step. We're gonna take it easy this year. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna see what we have. Meanwhile, the payroll is still like three hundred and thirty million dollars. They still have an offense, as we will get to here. With a lot of very good veterans good in their prime. It's good offense, man. And they have not seemingly built the team around them to win. But I still think they could be pretty good. Who is on the Mets? Jay? So just quickly, $360 million payroll mm-hmm. is where the number is on fan graphs, on roster resource. Yeah, I mean, uh, how many of them are quickly, actually guys on the team? So just quickly, 34 for Lindor. That's mm-hmm. a million. Not like $34. $34 yeah, million. Thank you. Nimmo is 20 Marte is 20 Mm-hmm. Eddie D is 21. Mm-hmm. Kodai Senga, who's hurt, is 15. Manaya is 14. Quintana is 13. Severino is 13. McNeil is 10. Mm-hmm. Bader is 10. Omar Narvaez is 7. Pete is 20 on in ARB. Adrian <laughs> Hauser is 5 in ARB. Now, again, to be fair, other it, payments 60 30 million. million. <laughs> they sent, they're sending 30 million to Texas for Scherzer, uh-huh. 26 million to Houston for Verlander. And a nice eight mil to the Orioles for James McCann. So again, that's that's a lot of money to for players that are not on their team. But the point is, it's still a very expensive team, and still a team that offense still looks pretty good. Their catcher is Francisco Alvarez. He's twenty two. We love him. We think he's going to be awesome. First baseman Pete Alonso. We're familiar with his game. Second base Jeff McNeil. <laughs> they, I, I'm not really familiar with his game. I don't really know what to make of Jeff McNeil the hitter anymore. Third base Brett Beatty. They we'll see what we have from him. My uh, take on Jeff McNeil is just simply thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, Short San Francisco Lindor. Great example. Unbelievable season last year. No, awesome, nobody cared. <laughs> because so they were so relevant in the second half. Uh, outfield. Brandon Nemo. Now moving to left. They have Harrison Bader. Staying in New York. Um, but going to Queens. He is in center. Starling Marte. Seems like he'll be playing right. And also getting some DH at bats. Uh, DH also G-Man Choi. Mark Vientos. Wow. Amazing. That is not Shohei Otani. Starting rotation. Kodai Senga probably hurt to start the year, so we're looking at Jose Quintana, Luis Severino, Sean Manaya, Adrian Hauser, Tyler McGill in some order. Well, you could talk yourself into all those guys. Bullpen. And talk yourself out of all those <laughs> guys. Talk yourself all, out of all those guys. That's the, like, compare this to the Yankees rotation. So yeah. You could talk yourself into those guys, and you could talk yourself into all these guys. <laughs> but those guys are better than these guys. They are better. Yeah, you, you talk it's easier out to talk too. yourself into the Yankees rotation. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, that's definitely true. Uh, Edwin Diaz is back. That's really cool. That's no, don't need to overcomplicate that. That's great. He's gonna uh, get Adam Adovino is also saves. back. <laughs> Less cool, but still good. Uh, Brooks Raley, Drew Smith. Okay, great. So one big question: Pete Alonso. Obviously, it's not that complicated. Just, you'll hear this on every other Mets podcast. But free agent uh, at the end of the year. Yeah. Again, I, I don't. I don't expect them to unless unless this is happening in the next week, which I doubt. I don't think they're going to extend him. So we've heard very little extension buzz relatively around yeah. Pete, and I I'm skeptical that he will get an extension just because he's Boris now. So yeah. Scott Boris hates extensions. Yes, but um, as Steve Cohen fairly pointed out, he's like, I'm not worried. You know, we brought back Nimmo, we brought back Diaz. If they want Pete, they'll pay for Pete. Yeah, exactly. And I've been pretty consistent saying they should. Like, and maybe that. Like, I, I don't even think this is a question. I just think that replacing what he is capable of is, is so hard. And if you are, if you, to me, it's as simple as if you are willing to pay that much to keep Nimmo, Pete shouldn't even be a question. Yeah. Like, he is absolutely should be the guy to keep. But whatever. So that's, that's going to loom over the, the season. Well, for it's sure. really like, is there a scenario in which they suck mm-hmm. hard and they trade Pete yeah. and then they yeah. just sign him as winter? Yeah. Or try to pull that off. You know, right? yeah. I think that's definitely in play if this team is bad. Yeah. Because, Holding on to Pete for the second half of this year of their bet. Like, think about what a team would pay to have him in the middle of their lineup. A contender no, I know. In the, I know. Oh, my God. But that's stretch. And that's why, obviously, I'm sure teams tried this winter. Yeah. And they, they were not willing to. because And the fact that they didn't is not just the fact that I'm sure they do want to keep him long term. But that's my other big question. Just like, I just... I, <laughs> It's frustrating that they kind of do these half measures because I just look at this offensive core. I'm like, why are we wasting a year of, of you know, Pete, Lindor, Nimmo, McNeil, don't, whatever no, McNeil. Like, the, I don't understand it. I still, I mean, he's still, he's, he's still at least something. Clearly still, he's still going to play, you know, 150 games. I have no idea how good he is, but there's a version of him where he hits 300 again. And I just don't know how many more of those seasons you're going to get. So, let alone whatever you're getting from Marte at this point. So I don't know. I, I just I don't think this team's that bad. So it's just frustrating, I guess. Lindor's the, the one. It's just like again, what more could you possibly ask from this guy? The window doesn't line up. 
Yeah. It's that's what's confusing about the Mets. It yeah. feels like we're working with a couple different timelines. Now that's now said, you know yeah. like okay, so in the NBA. I know about yeah. You've heard of it. It's like yeah. MLB for yeah, basketball. National basketball. Bad Minton. Ba- basketball. Nash, Got it. Bad Minton. <laughs> yes. So because each player in the NBA is more important to the success of a team, mm-hmm. windows in the NBA are dictated more by specific players. Yeah, right. So like sure. I'm just trying to think of an example, right? Like mm-hmm. uh like the Timberwolves having Anthony Edwards. Yep. As long as he's on the team, like they're right. In a they should have cycle. they should have a chance. Right. The Mets I can't pin down their well, right. Like that's it, just baseball, so it's like I don't. It, to me, it's more of just, especially with with Nimmo and just like having those guys be. Because I just think they're really good, and like to have that many really good players and just kind of half-ass it. Like that's that's what bothers me, I guess. I don't know if it's I don't care how much it. they're. I don't. I don't care how much they're. How is much it half-assing it, or is it David Stearns trying to like David Stearnsify? The yeah, and I'm, I'm not saying that. I, I, that's the thing. I don't know if I'm not saying they should have. Of course. You, they can't decide whether to sign Otani. They, they clearly tried to sign Yamamoto when they yeah. they just didn't. So maybe they were trying harder and it just didn't work out. So I'm not. I don't think they did a terrible job. It just yeah. it just looks a little strange. But it also creates a very weird energy. Yeah. This season where for expectations, the expectations around this team from the fan base are lower. Yeah. However, there is more confidence in the organization mm-hmm. than there has been in a Definitely. long time. Where you trust David Stearns and you trust Mendoza and you trust that Steve Cohen is going to invest. And so no one, I don't get the sense that Mets fans are mad. No, no. I'm, that's but it's the thing. also they're, like they're not excited. Yeah. So it's I, this bizarre ambivalence that I maybe, can't. Yeah, pin maybe out. I'm misreading it, but that's that's where I've seen it. And, and that's, to me, that's part of kind of what, what makes me laugh. And then we'll, then we'll do the key players. It's just like Steve Cohen, he talked uh, to the media uh, recently, or I think over the weekend, he was basically like, yeah, I'm feeling good. Our farm system looks great. Like, you know, I finally feel like we're really building it. And it's like. That is very reasonable and smart and good. This is kind of, again, we knew he wanted to kind of do it that way, which is great. I can't say he's doing it wrong. It's just <laughs> such an incredible tone shift from a year ago uh, that is, is is strange, is strange yes. when you still have so much, so many of the same players. And they almost had Carlos Correa too. People forget about that. <laughs> uh, the one other thing that makes me laugh is if this team wins 71 games, which could happen, mm-hmm. and Edwin Diaz <laughs> gets the trumpets, once every two weeks. Once every two weeks. <laughs> and seeing the Edwin Diaz trumpets it's, is yeah. a rarity. Yeah. Or like, the, here's the saddest version, right? Um, they're on a cold streak and there's no, but it's like, we got to get Edwin some work. Here they're, comes the trumpets down by seven. Here comes Eddie D trotting in, and, you do, know, do, like the do, crowd do, of like 22,000 is like, yeah, 22,000. Is that too many? Way too many. I went to some Mets <laughs> games at the end of okay. last year. It was sparse. Okay. Um, I love Edwin Diaz, though. I'm, I'm yeah, excited to watch him. Of course. Uh, my key player is mm-hmm. Luis Severino. Yeah. Just because it's, <laughs> it, I don't think this is going to be an exciting year for the Mets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think turning Severino into something really good is a small win when it comes mm-hmm. to Mets versus Yankees vibe stuff in New York City, right? Mm-hmm. If the Yankees rotation is bad and guys get hurt and they miss time, whatever. And Severino is just shoving in Queens. Mm-hmm. He's going to be on the back page of the New York Post and it's going to be like, wow, the, you know who the Yankees could use is Luis Severino. That's, yeah, no, that's all, all these pitchers. It's a very strange. Uh, you could, like you said, talk, talk, talk yourself into it. You can talk yourself out of it. I mean, for me, it's, it's one of the young guys. I, this is kind of like we said about the Nats. Um, between Abrams and Rees, for me, between Alvarez and Beatty, right? Like, I believe in Alvarez. Beatty, who did torch AAA, like, he's kind of done all he needs to do in the minors. You know, him and with with Alvarez, with Mauricio, Fiantos, not quite as much. Like, that's the the next wave, right? That's I, I know they have more guys coming with Jet Williams and Acuna, but, like, Beatty, he's got to show it or they're going to move on to the next wave of guys because he was just a very bad hitter last year and not a tiny sample. You know, 386 plate appearances, 598 OPS. I don't. I know there's some underlying stuff where you could say, no, it wasn't that bad. To me, he's going to have to show it or there there, there are now guys coming behind him. It sucks that Mauricio is going to be out, yeah. but I that's that's one that I'm, I'm really curious about. You know what's more important than underlying stuff? Mm. Overlying stuff. Give me Give me an example. Like... Home runs, or <laughs> I agree, which or his two twelve batting average. Batting average is not 
everything. I, at some point. But it's a lot. At some point. Just because we, batting average is too important doesn't mean it's not important. Think about because also here's the thing, right? Think about how long Kyle Schwarber had to do what he did before we were like, okay, fine, he could hit 212. Like it took a while. Years. <laughs> it took, it took a long time. Uh over under is 81 and a half. <laughs> I mean, um, I'm gonna go slight under still. I would take the under on. 75 and a half, I think. Just 75 be- and a half? Yeah, I just Oh my think, gosh, we're going, you're pushing, okay. I think they're going to be pretty bad, and I think... And if it's bad, we know they're going to trade. That's yeah. that's why, yeah. right? Is yeah. I don't see this front office not pulling the plug if yeah. they're mid. Yeah. They're not going to stumble forward to 80 wins. Like, no, there's no value not. in that for them, and I think they understand that. And so <laughs> just like, they have enough to trade where I... It's like last year. Last I know, year, I know. Yeah. Last year, if they yeah. had held on to those guys, they would have won 82 games, probably, yeah. or Which 80 been, games. Right. But they didn't, and they won 75. So that's what I think happens again this year. All right. Let's take a break. Let's do it. And when we return, we will talk about two teams quite familiar with one another and quite familiar with me. And welcome back to Baseball Barbacast, Jake Mintz, Jordan Schusterman. Let's talk about the Philadelphia Phillies, who last year... Uh, I actually don't know how many. They win 90 games? <laughs> 90 games. Okay. <laughs> 90 games, yeah. 90 games. 90 games. 14 back of uh, the, the Braves. Which is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of games. They were 14 games back of the Braves. They were 14 games back of the Braves. That is, you know, the Pirates, you know, were 16 back of the Brewers. Um, I mean, the Diamondbacks were 16 back of the Dodgers. And, and yeah, Philly's 14 back of Atlanta. Wow. And then they got to October, and they took care of the Marlins. They took care of the Braves. And then they took care of the Diamondbacks until they didn't anymore <laughs> in Game Six the and opposite. Seven. There was not care was not being taken. They won a five game set against the Diamondbacks. Well, I mean, that's two. exactly it was the opposite. <laughs> they they were like completely forgot oh. to finish the job. The job was not finished, and they they were done. Like <laughs> they thought the job was finished. Go back and watch those highlights. Underratedly catastrophic. Like I oh. Awful. Just a don't t- Phillies fans go don't, back, go, go Phillies back fans, and watch those. Don't watch those games. <laughs> go back and watch those lowlights. It was an embarrassment. That was really. It tough. was again like there were. I know. To me, I I feel like it was overshadowed because the ALCS was was bumping. You know, so like all the attention was on the Astros and Rangers, rightfully so, because it was a lot more exciting. Uh, But my gosh, what a what a disaster that that was for the Phillies. But okay, that's what happened last year. What did they do uh, this offseason? Not much. They gave Aaron Nola a boatload of money immediately. Like right away. Right away. They're like, let's get this done. Let's get done. Let's get done. Then they did very, very little. You know, they signed Whit Merrifield. They that's it. They what else that that's it. They did Spencer Turnbull. And then they gave Zach Wheeler a bunch of money. So extended him. He would have been a free agent at the end of this year. Very, very straightforward offseason. And now they return with basically the exact same team, pro- probably the most similar team of it's, any team in the league. It's a, a nearly historic level of continuity. I believe 97% of the total plate appearances are back. Only three players who appeared in a game, mm-hmm. uh, position players who appeared in a game for the 2023 Phillies are mm-hmm. gone. Mm-hmm. Three guys are gone. Mm-hmm. And that's like... It's Drew Ellis. It's Drew Ellis, Josh Harrison... Mm-hmm. And Jake, K- no, Jake Cave's still there. Drew right? Ellis, Derek Josh Hill, Harrison, Derek Hall? no, and uh, uh, Dalton Guthrie. <laughs> Dalton Guthrie. It's okay. like a hundred plate appearances. Yeah. tops, right. Yeah, everyone else is still there. Went there during spring. It's the same team. If you've seen the Phillies the last two seasons, you've but, but seen remind this us, one. remind us who's on the team. Who's on the team behind the dish? It is JT Real Muto and Garrett Stubbs, member of the tribe, Forever. friend of the show. First base, uh, first base, Bryce Harper. <laughs> Goodbye to Reese Hoskins. Second base, Bryson Stott. Third base, Alec Bohm. Shortstop, Trey Turner. And outfield of Nick Castellanos in right. Johan Rojas in center is going to break camp, it looks like, with the team. Mm-hmm. The bat is behind the glove, but oh my God, is the glove good. Mm-hmm. Brandon Martian left. Kyle Schwarber is going to get to DH mostly every day. Over-under Schwarber game starting in the outfield is like 11 and a half. <laughs> under? How does it get to that high? Someone will get hurt. Someone always How gets hurt. How many did he play last year? I'm actually curious. Uh, I believe the number was around 70. Oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, which is part of why the Phillies were 14 games back in the Braves. It was 103 starts in left field. I'm sorry. I know, I mean I knew it was a lot because of the Harper situation, but 
in my head, it was not that many. Okay, so that's a big deal. If there is something different about the Phillies, it is that Kyle Schwarber will not play 100 games in the outfield. Well, it's going to be a very good defensive outfield. Rojas is elite in center, and Marsh is going to be very good in left. Right. Nick Castellanos is trying his best. Trying his best. Well, at least in the postseason. At least in the postseason. <laughs> don't, no promises don't know about, the regular about season. May. <laughs> I hope there's one game where they run out the Pache, Rojas, like Pache Marsh outfield, there. which right. is like three very good center fielders. It might game. go 0 for 10, but that's fine. <laughs> Against left. <laughs> the DRS uh, will be through the roof. Starting pitchers. Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola, Ranger Suarez, who's just awesome. Christopher Sanchez and Taiwan Walker. Bullpen, pretty similar to uh, Jose Alvarado, no Matt Strom, Orion Kirkering, and rejoice Philadelphia fans <laughs> because Craig Kimbrell is no longer on the team. Mm. Uh, what's your one big question about the Philly story? My one big question is, how good is this offense really? This is a very famous offense, an offense we're very used to seeing, but with... Um, again, the Trey Turner season last year was so bizarre. He was so bad and then so good. And then kind of, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was not particularly pretty in the postseason Horrible. either. Horrible. Right? Really, really bad. And then Bryce Harper, who was awesome generally once he f- fell f- fully healthy, but he's a first baseman now. Um, and so what? what is he? No, I'm not, I'm not saying a word about Bryce Harper. Real Muto, I would say, a pretty substantial step back offensively last year. Yeah. And then we're still trying to see just how good of a hitter, you know, Stott and Bohm and Marsh are. So Castellanos, you know, he'll probably be fine, but it's hard to see him necessarily being any better than he has been in the past. Yeah. So I'm just, it's very famous. I don't, it's, it's clearly an above average lineup, yeah. but I'm not as excited about this group as I feel like I was last year where I was like, oh my God, this lineup could be amazing. Weirdly, I just feel better about the pitching, which I, I c- can't believe I'm saying that about the Phillies. That is very funny. Uh, let me just correct myself on Trey Turner. So he was great against the Braves and the Marlins. And then uh, Marlins was two games, but yeah, right. I mean, yeah, those were two big games. Yeah, I mean, he they did need to win them. Two hits and a double in both. Like, okay. yep. stole two bases against the Marlins. He was good against those other teams, but uh, against the Diamondbacks, he really got exposed a little bit. It was just looked out of whack. And for for me, he's the key player because you got to crumble last year up. Like it was, it was so bizarre what happened with him. And he's not as bad as he was for four months, and he's not as good as he was for two months. I mean, no one is as good as he was for the last two months of yeah. the season. He was homering every two minutes. Yeah, He had the standing ovation, the whole city behind him, and then in the NLCS, it kind of like just reverted back to what it had been for four months. And granted, that's a small sample size. I could see this going a lot of different directions, too. Yeah. And so I think what I need from Trey, what the team needs from Trey, like what is consistency. He, we need to see some consistency for Trey Turner mm-hmm. in 2024. Who's your guy? <laughs> I just think about Trey Turner. It's like, well, uh, we are probably going to be asking that about him for the next literally 10 years because he's under he's contract a forever. Left. <laughs> he's like, it's like we're just going to be doing that over and over. He, so get used to having these same conversations. Yeah. I mean, we'll have children. Also defensively. We'll have children when he's done. <laughs> defensively also. Very weird. Um, I don't. Again, I could pick a lot of guys in this offense. I don't know. I mean, I guess... I guess Castellanos. I don't. Know, I, I guess back to the pitching. Like Christopher Sanchez looks so good. Like he 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 sold both of us. Yeah. Um. And if Taiwan Walker is, maybe it's Taiwan Walker. I mean, he's someone that clearly they're committed to him being in the rotation, but they were not committed to him being in the rotation in the postseason. So maybe he is just a regular season guy, and there is value in giving you 150 competent regular season innings, which he can probably do. But if he can kind of figure something out, and if Sanchez is that good, that they could have one of the best rotations in the league, which again is a weird thing to say, but that's very possible. So maybe it is that if the pitching is going to be the strength. What makes us laugh about the Phillies? A lot of things. They're a funny team, funny fan base, funny everything. Um, I mean, Castellanos again. It's really just that like we're just we're just getting the, the words of wisdom from him on the regular now. So you deep. Just, you just never you never know what you're getting. So talking I'm about just very grateful milk. that he has you know microphones in his face all the time because you never. You're know. welcome. <laughs> it's it's great. So um, I'm I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the Nick Castellanos experience. Another thing that makes me laugh just. It is the Kyle Schwarber leading off conversation? How I mean, it's, it'll keep doing it, right? I mean, I think, I think the it's going to change. Sports talk radio has changed in the podcast era, mm-hmm. I think, mm-hmm. and we have there, there's a, almost like a dampening in some ways. Everyone has gotten smarter, I think, generally. Mm-hmm. Philly sports talk radio clamoring to move Schwarber out of the leadoff spot 
to me is like the perfect type of sports talk radio in a, in a city. Like, so why right. is this guy hitting first? Like, get him out of but, there. But I don't, I, I, and again, a lot of it was, is because he was still slugging. Right. And so it's like, we, if we're, oh. if we're thinking traditional, we want him driving in the runs. Right. So we should be batting third or fourth. But just remember, you know, last year the season began and it was Turner for like a few weeks and then it was stopped for two months and then it was Schwarber basically from June it through the great. end of the season and it was great. I don't imagine them changing that. I if anything, I'm and, and it's like they seem so locked into that, you know, Schwarber, Turner, Harper, you know, that's the group. They're so committed to that. And I don't know what it looks like for that to look different. So that is probably what it's gonna still be, but yeah, that's kind of what they have, and I don't really see how they're gonna change it. I that. just love how much it pisses people off. The <laughs> order of the hitters does <laughs> not matter. I mean, as that's long not as true, you're but yeah. As long as your good hitters are hitting higher, generally, yeah. than your bad hitters, it's not the end of the world. Uh, 89 and a half is the over-under for the Phillies. I think I'm going to go under. <laughs> nah, I'll go over. I'll Slightly. Go, I'm going to go over as well. I think it'll be the same thing as the last two years. Mm. They don't have the same level of depth that Atlanta does, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And they have shown they don't stay as healthy as Atlanta does. And I think Atlanta's yeah, still that's better. Yeah, the thing, though. They, and the injuries, uh, yeah. if they are a couple injuries from, from dipping into some... Yeah, but... As, also, they have Whit Merrifield now. That's a guy that's, I'm yeah. curious how much he's going to play. I could imagine him getting a good amount of at-bats at second. If the Phillies and the Braves have shown us anything over the last two years, yeah. it's that the Braves are very, very well built over 162. Mm -hmm. Phillies have been very well built over five. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's going to be the same as the last two seasons. But as long as the Phillies can get... Certainly might be. <laughs> certainly might be. As long as the Phillies get to October, yeah, they're not a team you want to play in October because yeah. the you win mm -hmm. in the regular season with your best 35 players. Mm -hmm. You win in October with your best 11. Mm -hmm. Right? And like the Phillies have a pretty good 11. Yes. Yes. Very fair. Uh, all right. So I'm talking about the Braves of Atlanta. They won so many baseball games. I believe it was 104 W's in 2023. And then uh, something happened at the end of their season. And then they, then they were out. Uh, what happened this off season? <laughs> um, yeah. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, do I have anything else to add? About no. what? About how the season ended? No. All it right. was actually, yeah, it was unfortunate. <laughs> it was unfortunate. That team was so good. And they, yeah. they also capitulated before the Phillies capitulated. They did. They Braves first. Yeah. But maybe, maybe is it more embarrassing to uh, lose to the Phillies in, in, no. in, than it is to lose to the Diamondbacks? I don't know. I thought the Phillies' loss was more embarrassing than the Braves' loss. Oh, yeah, by far. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, okay, here's how the Braves lost. Ready? Bryce Harper. Was like I'm the one like, of the best oh, players Bryce in the Harper, world. Right. Here yeah. we go. The Phillies lost because to the Diamondbacks because they just couldn't stop swinging at sliders from you know Kevin Ginkle. <laughs> no, on, hey, respect to the gink. No shade to the gink. No, I, I agree. So anyway, but the Phillies did play deeper into October, um, and the Braves were not feeling great at the end of the season. Now, as Alex Anthopoulos, he's he's not just going to sit there. He is going to, even with the team that wins 104 games, whether it was a reaction to the postseason or not, he knew we're, we got to do something. We, we got to show, hey, we are not content. I am not content with this roster. And so they, they made some real moves. He was really, he was really, he was making, he was making trades that you didn't even like trades that he was basically making trades so that he could make other trades. Yeah. Which is, which is when you know you are really busy. Alex and Bob was not invited to the Yahoo Sports Fantasy League. Nope. With us, no. Unless he emails us at baseballbarbercast@gmail.com. Alex Anthopoulos, which in, in, we would have to consider it. If he does spend time in the next, I guess, day, he has not emailed us yet. Yeah. Yet, we will have. If you, hopefully you understand. If any current MLB GMs or presidents of baseball operations mm -hmm. want to be in the fantasy league <laughs> and want to remain anonymous in the fantasy league, we will label you as. Anonymous front office person. I like you are yeah. welcome to join. Now, is that allowed? Probably not. Probably but not. You're but but I, I am liking the idea of Alex Anthopoulos emails us like, "Hey guys, we'd love to be in the league." Um, we we comes. He's in. He's in the draft. I assume we'll just do random draft order that'll get set day of. Oh, and Anthopoulos is a first pick, and he like takes Julio instead of Acuna. Mm. <laughs> it's like, huh? huh. 
Interesting. How about How that? How about that? Um, anyway, who's uh, what did the Braves do this offseason? They traded for Jared Kelnick. That's interesting. They traded for Chris Sale. That is very interesting. They signed Reynaldo Lopez, who will be their fifth starter. Mm. That is extremely interesting. They spent some money on the bullpen. They traded for Aaron Bummer. I forgot about that until right now. They signed Joe Jimenez. They signed Pierce Johnson. And they, they brought Adam Duvall back. Adam Duvall is back, of course. Traded for David Flesher, who's on the bench. All kinds of trades. But generally, this team is still the team we've watched be one of the best teams in yes. baseball over the last couple of years. It was a lot of transactions to end up with the same team. I mean, I, that's not true, right? Sorry, but let it, me it's still. I, may, yeah. I, may I edit that? Yes. It was a lot of transactions to end up with the same starting lineup, more or less. Yes, yes. Because Especially when Adam Duvall is there. Um, right. This uh, starting lineup yes. will be yes. Sean Murphy and Travis Sterno splitting time behind the dish. Matt Olson at first. Ozzie Albies at second. Austin Riley at third. Orlando Arce at shortstop. Ronald Acuna Jr. in right. Michael Harris, the second, who has somehow become underrated, I think, mm -hmm. uh, in center. Left field looks to be a split. Between Duvall and Jared Kelnick, which is not what they told Jared Kelnick a couple of weeks ago before he stunk up the storm in spring. Marcelo Zuna is the designated hitter and the rotation. Spencer Strider, Max Fried in the last year of his contract with the Braves. Charlie Morton, who is 40. Yeah. Chris Sale, who is 36. 35. 35. And Reynaldo Lopez, who is good. But a starter, apparently. But a starter. Bryce Elbert. He was an all-star last year. Off to Gwinnett. To Gwinnett. Sorry, buddy. See ya. Now, the Braves have done this a, a few Get times now. Get ready to learn Gwinnett. <laughs> the Braves have done this a few times now. They're like, oh, Ian Anderson, you are a top pick, and you're pitching in huge innings for nope. us in the 2020 postseason. Banished. Gone. See ya. Or, oh, you know, Jared Schuster, we just took him in the first round. Boom, gone. See ya. Mike Soroka, oh, this is really nice. You rehabbed. You came all the way back. Gone. Off Sorry to the White Sox your... as well. Sorry. If you're not, if you're not... At the Brave standard, when yeah. they are looking at you, Dude, you're gone, right? I, I love it. And that's that's the standard that they have set, and uh, clearly the standard that they have now also set for Jerry Kelnick, in yeah. that they said, listen, of course, this is a great buy-low opportunity. 24-year-old outfielder with, with big promise doesn't have to be an all-star. He can just play the Eddie Rosario role for much cheaper, play good defense. He's been terrible this spring, and they're like, oh, okay, sorry, dude, we're not going to give you all the at-bats because we're the Braves, and we need to ensure exactly what we're getting, and so they bring Adam Duvall back. That I, is the culture that has been set. That yes. is the expectations that have been set. That is part of why, I mean, oh, it also helps that they just have all these awesome players. So that's, they yeah. have other options, right? There's a reason they can do this is because they can go get, but but it's also in, in, in interesting ways for, for Chris Sale to be the guy to come in, for Reynaldo Lopez to be the one to replace Bryce Elder. That's such a fascinating sequence of events. Correct. I, this may sound a little odd coming from me. I love the, what the Braves have created in the room. I really do. And I think that they have a culture where guys post. Yep. They play. Yep. It is a professional environment. They have proved they've won six straight division titles with a very similar core. Mm -hmm. And I think it is a machine that runs itself. October is its own thing. And the conversation around the Braves the last two seasons has been like, Man, what is this? They won. Mm -hmm. They won everything in 2021. This mm -hmm. is not like a dot. They're not the Dodgers before 2020. No. Right? They did it. They did it in the one of the first years of this group. And like, I think this run from the Braves is, is underrated. Like, I really am yeah, just but, so Yeah, but I would say, and for all we joke about jobs not finished after winning a World Series, which I still will laugh at, um, when your roster, which has gotten even better since yeah. 2021, somehow, the standards are there. Yeah. Like, they, the, that's this, why there you, is so you much can't talent on this team. They mm -hmm. owe it to themselves to be a dynasty, mm -hmm. which, like... Which they haven't quite gotten there. They're because, not there. Because the, but, they've missed championship series. Yes. Two years in a row, but, which the Astros haven't done. Correct. <laughs> but that conversation is a... Every fan base would love to be like, well, we're one step oh, yeah, short yeah, of no a dynasty. Bad. No one feels bad. Yeah, no, and so not. I, but I just think like, you'd still, the, you'd still rather have set that standard than not. So, the, the Braves, correct. Yeah. That's I guess the, a good way to summarize this yeah. conversation is the Braves standard is so high. It is a testament to what the organization has accomplished that that standard is so high, mm -hmm. and I think they're going to win more regular season games than the Dodgers. I still think they're better than the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. I do. Even the Dodgers did all this stuff. 
over the winter, and I think the Braves are better. Uh, but my one big question is, can they stay comically healthy again? And that is, that was not the case in the rotation. Let's just be clear about that. They had a lot of injuries yeah. with pitchers, and they had to backfill that with depth. And it didn't matter. They still because they were scoring so many runs. You were scoring so many runs, but I mean, like, and again, but they they got full seasons from like flawless full seasons from Olson, Riley, and Acuna. Which when you're those guys are that good, yeah, you're gonna it's gonna go pretty far. Ozzy played 148 games. Mm -hmm. Ozuna played 144 games. Mm -hmm. Rosario played 142 games. Arcia played 139 games. Harris played 138 games. That's an outrageous level of consistency. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Murphy plus Darno. Yeah, they, they barely miss time. They and, barely miss and, time. And by the way, that, and that's why it's a big question because they don't have the position player depth. Like this farm system is not necessary. They traded Von Grissom, obviously, and that's fine. I understand why they did that. There are still arms that we could see come up and help in the case that Charlie Morton, who's old, gets hurt, or Chris Sale gets hurt, or Lopez turns out not to yeah. be a starter. But the bench, which right now is David Fletcher, Luis Guillorme, Duvall, Kelnick, whatever, yep. that's where they are thin. And so now even, again, it's still going to be an above-average offense if Austin Riley gets injured. But that's, if you're, if you're identifying a, a possible concern, that is one of them. The reason I'm not concerned about that, though, is I think it will even out because this is their rotation last year, ready? 11 starts for Jared Schuster, 7 for Dylan Dodd. Seven for a hurt, bad Kyle Wright. Six <laughs> yeah. for Mike. God, that's another one. Another first round. They're like, all right, thanks for your time. Goodbye. Six for Mike Soroka. Six from Alan Winans. Okay. Mm -hmm. Five from Yanni Chirinos. Three from Colby Allard. Two from Darius Vines. Colby Allard. Another okay. One. That it's just they were really hurt in the rotation last year. Yep. I think they will be less hurt than they were last year in the rotation, and more hurt than they were last year in the lineup. And I think that will even out. Uh, injuries are possible to predict, but I totally hear what you're saying. Key players, I'm going with Sean Murphy. Mm. Sean Murphy, who, again, first half of the year, it's like, oh my God, he's the best catcher in baseball. Here are the Braves. They did it again. They Olsen's amidst this amazing season, and they just got both of them from Oakland, whatever. Murphy was atrocious offensively in the second half. One of the worst hitters in baseball in the second half. Can I ever blame a catcher for having a tough time hitting? No. no. We, but, on this so podcast, it's fun. We thank catchers for their service. <laughs> Always. They should get on airplanes first. Yep. Uh, but. 1K members. But, those traveling with children. But part of, the, part of the reason their offense was, you know, God tier in the first four months was because Sean Murphy was part yeah. of that. And he was not part of that in the second half. And so do they need him to be an above average, that good of a hitter? Probably not. But I, I am yeah. curious where that settles in. Because that was part of what made them like just a total super team, and they, it was the opposite in the second half. Uh, Chris Sale, my yep. key player. Mm -hmm. They traded Von Grisham. Mm -hmm. Grisham, I gotta stop saying Grisham. Von Grisham, mm -hmm. who you know, young controllable position player that mm -hmm. was very could have been useful for them. Who yeah. was gonna play left field? Yeah, they said this before they yeah. traded him. Remember? Yeah, they sent he him to winter ball to play left. Mm -hmm. Chris Sale, thirty five years old. He has not been. Chris Sale, good since I believe 2018. Well, I mean, what is Chris? That's not really a fair what? thing to. I mean, yes, but what would what, what he what, has not at some point you can't Cy Young vote. I believe since 2018. Correct. Okay, that was a long time ago. 2019, he had a 4-4 in 147. Then he got TJ didn't pitch in 20. Mm -hmm. 42 innings in 21 hurt. Mm -hmm. Five innings in 22 mm -hmm. hurt. 100 last year with a 4-3. Mm -hmm. If he gives the Braves 100 with a 4-3, they're probably fine with that. Yeah. But you could see a scenario where he gives them 17 innings or he gives them <laughs> 150 bad innings. Or No, I think he's going to be good. I think he's either going to be good or hurt. Okay. I I think I I'm not really worried about Chris Sale being bad. I'm worried about him not pitching. Okay. Cuz he was um, pretty mid last year. Yeah. Again, underlying overlying. What do we what do we want? There's some there's who some positive stuff. I know our, our friend Foolish Baseball is pretty optimistic. You know what makes me laugh about the Braves? How good they are. Well, there's that. But does this team want the buy? There oh, was God. a. I think. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Can I wait? Can I just yeah, say? I'm going to be yeah. very blunt about this. I have a bigger problem with how the Braves handled the buy mm. than the Arcia stuff. Like complaining about it. Yeah. Yeah. The way. I feel like the Dodgers complain more. They both were complaining. Yeah. Like. You know who didn't complain? The Astros. 
it the I, <laughs> someone asked I think asked Snicker this was like okay so you don't you think the layoff is damaging do you want would you rather play in yeah. the round before and he was like no I'm like okay like yeah. I get I get why it's difficult I get why the time sure. off is weird and that's odd I understand right. but that's the setup mm -hmm. it's an advantage yeah. enough I know but here's the thing even in the world where they wanted to you know maneuver it so that I mean they are at least projected to be so far ahead they're not going to be making that choice that's my that's what's <laughs> so, funny to me is it's they yeah. don't have a say yeah they're too uh, I mean, good right they're too good to have a choice but it is funny if like enough things go wrong enough guys get hurt where it's like actually close between them and the Phillies at the end yeah and they're like well, well actually I'd rather play immediately after game 162 sure 101.5 is the over under Jake Mintz yeah. That's a large number. Remember, the Dodgers were at 103.5. On the train on the way here, I said I would take the under, and I'm going to take the over. <laughs> this team is yeah. so good, man. They're so good. Yeah. I'm going to take the over, too. All right. Which Braves, seems absurd. Braves fans. I don't know. Are we cool? No. Don't. What? Just, you don't have to be cool with them. I want to be cool. I don't want to. I don't like animosity. <laughs> like, you have there a really good, need to be. You there got a really good ball be. club. You got a there really good ball club. Doesn't need to be. I'm looking they don't need to, to hear that from you. People know that. Uh, like the, the Braves, Braves are really ridiculously good. That's the NL East. We did it. We previewed it. On Wednesday, we will preview the National League Central, AL Central on Friday. Uh, this was a lot of fun. We will be in the same place again on um, on Wednesday. But again, thank you all for listening. You can email us at baseballbarbercast at gmail.com. 6 p.m. Mountain Time. We are closing submissions for the Baseball Barbercast Polls Fantasy closed. League. If you're in line, don't <laughs> stay in line. Please get out of line. We've had enough submissions. <laughs> Go home. Don't vote. Don't submit. Voter suppression from your favorite <laughs> podcasters. No, it's fine. Keep keep them coming. You can still sway us uh, over the rest of the day. But thank you all. again. The, the people who have sent in submissions, a lot of kind words. It's very cool and humbling, the, pe the people that have been you know, listening to us for a long time. We very much appreciate you. We will be responding to as many of them as possible, even if we're not invited. Here's another league. thing. Yeah. We could have... You folks can play fantasy baseball with one another. <laughs> That's true. If you don't get into I mean, our I league. thought about this, right? You know, do we uh, the Barbicast Discord? Oh, dude, dude, we we what if we do pro rel promotion relegation <laughs> fantasy leagues? <laughs> you can earn it and and get booted. <laughs> yeah, maybe we. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway. All right. That's it. That's been uh, this, this Monday edition of Baseball Barbicast. Uh, thank you to uh, the good folks here at uh, WTF Studios for, for hosting us. We appreciate that. Shouts out to Andrew Hartz, our producer. Shouts out to Wolf, uh, our man uh, who's our, our real producer today here. Real in the studio. sound engineer. No, I, and sound engineer and everything. He's, uh, I'm sure he's very confused about some of the things we said on this podcast, but we appreciate him. Yep. Thank you all for listening. Shouts out to the guest bedroom in my apartment for hosting For, for hosting Street. me. And uh, we'll be back on Wednesday in these, uh, in these very seats. Thanks for, all, for listening. Talk to you soon. Maybe we'll sit in those chairs. Maybe we will.